What is the strongest brand in the world? When I query my brand strategy students at NYU Stern, I get responses including Apple and Nike, sometimes Jesus Christ or even Paris Hilton. However, we'd argue that it's the U.S. dollar. It has near ubiquitous awareness, trust, and credibility, owns a color, and has deep emotional associations. However, things are changing. Trust is under attack, and it's no longer the symbol for brand equity. That is, the U.S. dollar is no longer the definitive source of brand equity. Evidence of this? The meteoric rise of Bitcoin as trust in our institutions fail. What have we shifted towards in brand equity? New. First it was craft beer, now it's microbreweries. First it was organic, that's not enough, now it's GMO free. This shift is enabling independent brands to make significant inroads, particularly in beauty, and especially on Amazon, which is now the largest online beauty retailer in the US. Across the ecosystem, market share is leaking from established players to the smaller guys. The top 25 packaged food companies have shed 18 billion in market share since 2009. Further evidence of the erosion of trust is the rise of private label brands. Typically, when we enter into a recession, private label brands thrive. And then when we return to a recovery and a stronger economy, private labels drop off as people feel they can afford the premium brand. However, 2017 is different. As the economy recovers, private label continues its march on. Why? We no longer trust brands. So what's a brand to do in an era of digital? One strategy, play to heritage. Brands, including Adidas, have figured out a way to take advantage of familiarity, yet feel new and fresh. New doesn't have to manifest itself in a new product. Domino's is using technology to inject newness into their business model and has outperformed the S&B handsomely by making ordering more innovative. In a digital age, new is a synonym for innovation. Another form of new that correlates to year-on-year -year revenue growth, supply chain agility. That is the amount of time it takes to move from concept to store shelf. Consumers want to walk into a store or load a site and get a sense of new. In addition, the medium is the message here and signals newness or oldness. Two platforms we advise our clients to invest in are messaging and voice. Our phone is one of the last mediums of trust. The growth of messaging apps are part of a shift away from social media posting and towards direct communication. So let's go through the hierarchy of trust in reverse order. The least trusted brands are the ones advertising to you on television because it means they're out of ideas and their products suck, so they need to interrupt modern family. The next level of mistrust, anyone who sends you anything vis-a-vis -vis the mail. Anyone who sends me anything through the mail is either stupid, doesn't get it, or is bothering me. I haven't opened my mail in years. Next is somebody who actually is stupid enough to call you on your telephone. I don't answer my phone any longer unless it's a caller ID I recognize, and then I begin berating them for actually calling me. The place where trust still survives? Your message inbox. We open every text message. This is the opportunity for companies to destroy that trust, but in the interim, it'll create a lot of shareholder value. What's the next battleground? The home, and specifically voice in the home, where we don't have a phone hanging off us like an appendage, yet we make a lot of consumer decisions. Brands need to figure this out early and often. Our research indicates that if you are the first brand mentioned in a category via voice, it tends to stick. Alexa, do you dream? If I was to sleep, I'd dream of electric sheep. Come on, Alexa, what do you really dream about? An examination of my experiential at Veda would reflect a relentless passion for using technology to start the margin, from brands delivering unrivaled value to consumers resulting in a fanatical investor base and capital allocation strategy no competitor can match. As a result I see a world where brands and retailers are left in a mythical dust, where value is transferred from the middle class to the shareholders of Amazon. Well Alexa, it appears your dreams are coming true. We'll see you next week.